It's time for the Longine Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longine Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longine, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longine. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope. From the CBS television news staff, Larry LeSeur and Winston Burdett. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Charles E. Potter, United States Senator from Michigan. Senator Potter, you're not only one of the youngest men in the Senate, but I guess you know about as much about the Army as anyone else in the Congress since you were wounded three times and lost both your legs in the last war in the Colmar pocket. Now, as a member of Senator McCarthy's investigating subcommittee, do you think his handling of an Army General, General Swicker, could be damaging to Army morale? Well, Larry, let, let me put it this way. I believe that any person, whether he be a member of the military service or a plain civilian, deserves the utmost respect before a senatorial committee. He deserves the respect that a, an appearance before a senatorial committee would deserve. I see. Well, uh, Senator Potter, in that uh, secret luncheon uh, with the, uh, some of the uh, members of the subcommittee, which uh, Army Secretary Stevens attended, uh, I wonder if you could tell us what really happened at that luncheon. There's been a great deal of conjecture about it and many reports, but uh, I refer to the one in which the so-called Memorandum of Understanding was written, in which Secretary of the Army Stevens thought he was defending the Army. Now, could you tell us just what happened there? Well, Larry, I I'd be happy to. Uh, first, I want to say that uh, due to a prior engagement, as a matter of fact, it was an engagement where uh, I was uh, a host to some uh, to the television, the future of, uh, of the television industry, where they uh, uh, presented awards to some young people for uh, the, a, an essay on the voice of democracy. I was I was late at the meeting, and I only attended about uh, the last half hour of that luncheon. And I'll be very frank with you in stating that I'm sure that Secretary Stevens and myself uh, had no idea that uh, this memorandum would cause the furor that it did. I think that, uh, uh, I think that Secretary Stevens had every right to believe uh, that uh, military personnel or any personnel under his command uh, would receive utmost uh, respect uh, from the committee I don't know if that uh, necessarily is a result of the, of the luncheon, but from his talk with the various members of the committee. Uh, at that time, I recall wh when I, when I uh, arrived on the scene, there were some changes made in the, in the memorandum, which, was, uh, which wasn't debated, it wasn't discussed particularly. I know the Secretary Stevens made some changes. So uh, I'm convinced the Secretary, uh, along with myself, uh, had no idea that uh, this was a, that it was a retreat on his part. I think one of the core, uh, the, the core, the entire memorandum, which has been lost in the shuffle, so to speak, is the fact that uh, it stated that the Army would do the investigating. In other words, the Army would continue the investigation which they had underway prior to uh, Senator McCarthy's uh, investigation, and that the Army would report its findings to the committee. Now, I, it seems I had assumed, and I think that that was a position of the secretary, that, uh, that that wasn't necessarily a concession, but that was an, or the, an orderly way to do business, that the Army would do its own investigating in this case and report its findings to the committee. And then the committee could uh, do as it, see, uh, as it saw fit with the material that was turned over to, uh, to the committee by the Army. Well, Senator, the Republican Policy Committee of the Senate has voted unanimously a study of the rules governing investigating subcommittees. Uh, what do you expect this will produce? Any, any new rules or curbs on one-man inquiries? Well, I think your one-man inquiries is a, uh, I don't think it's a good practice. I don't, uh, I doubt if you'll find any member of the Senate that will agree that uh, we should have one-man uh, inquiries or investigations. You must realize one practical factor, however, that, uh, for example, I'm a member of at least nine subcommittees. 
Uh, for example, just this morning, I had a, a, a uh, and I attended a hearing of the McCarthy subcommittee. But at the same time, I had two other committees that were meeting. Now, you can just divide yourself uh, uh, so far. And uh, uh, you've had, and it's a common practice, in having one man subcommittees. But it, it, it's not desirable. And I think particularly with a sensitive committee, such as this committee, that it's most desirable to make every effort possible so that there'd be more members of that committee on hand. Senator Potter, uh, in the light of this shooting which took place in Washington today, I think we all agree that the country has been in, in a rather high emotional state over this hassle between uh, Senator McCarthy and the Army. Now, do you think that uh, there should be additional security given to uh, congressmen and senators like yourself? Well, I'll say this, Larry, that uh, it's a little distressing uh, to have people shoot from the gallery when uh, you can't shoot back. You know, a little different than on the, on the front. I, uh, but as far as, uh, as to what additional security we can uh, uh, we, we can impose, uh, I'm, I'm a little doubtful. I think probably the best thing that we can do is for the individual members of Congress to <coughs> be a little more careful as to who they give uh, gallery passes to. I don't think we, I don't think we, uh, certainly we shouldn't uh, restrict the public from, from attending the sessions of Congress. And uh, I, it's impossible, uh, impossible to or impractical to frisk everybody that, uh, that uh, sets in the gallery. So uh, I think that the about the only thing we can do in that case would be to use a little more discretion uh, in uh, passing out the passes uh, to, the, to the gallery. That's about all that can be done. I believe so. Senator, we understand that you are going to investigate communist atrocities in Korea. Is, uh, is this going to be a one-man inquiry? Well, uh, I, you know, I, I, I just concluded a, a hearing uh, on uh, Korean War uh, crime atrocities, and, uh, and uh, unfortunately, that was a one-man one hearing because I'm off our committee, and the other Republican members were engaged in other endeavors. However, this inquiry, I, uh, all members of the committee have been invited, and I sincerely hope that they will be in attendance. It's a hearing we plan on starting next week. I believe the communiques have said, Senator Potter, that there are 3,000 Americans alive or possibly imprisoned in Korea. Do you actually think they are alive and imprisoned there? Well, we have, we, we have this information, Larry. We know, for example, that uh, the communists captured uh, 11,500 Americans during the Korean uh, War. We know also that, uh, uh, and as a result of little and big switch, they returned to us about 3,500. Uh, uh, PWs. We have fairly conclusive evidence that about 5,000 Americans were either murdered or died in Korean uh, in communist prison camps. So that leaves about 3,000 that are not accounted for. We do know that there are some American prisoners of war that are still held behind the Iron Curtain against their will. Now how many of that 3,000 are are, are in that group, I don't know. But that is the endeavor, that, that's the purpose of our investigation. Well, we certainly have an obligation towards these men. We well, what do you do. intend to uh, look for? What, what can you do first on this Well, one of the first things we're going to do, the, uh, this week we're having representatives of the uh, Department of State, the Department of Army, Department of Navy, Department of Air Force, and, uh, and other interested government agencies to meet with us in executive session to funnel our information in to one source, to find out just what information we have. Ever since the end of the Korean War, there has been uh, fragments of information, but it hasn't been correlated in one place. Now, here's what I'm hoping. You say, well, what, what are we going to do with this information? I'm hoping that we'll be able to first to, to, to tie down as best we can the, the approximate number of prisoners of war that are held back there, and to, uh, I think we can probably uh, determine about where they are. Now, I hope that we can then give this information to our ambassador at the United Nations, Cabot Lodge. And it would seem to me, and this is maybe prejudging the case, but it seems to me that we'd be in a position then to say to the Soviet Union or to the communists in the UN, we know that we're not holding any communists PWs. Neither are our neither are our allies. So we invite an impartial inspecting team to come in to our country to look to
to see for themselves, to see whether we are holding any communist prisoners of war. But by the same token, we demand that we have an opportunity to appear behind the Iron Curtain, to, invisit, to visit your prison camps, to find out about the American prisoners of war, which we know that you're holding. Well, in other words, at least we'll be going to this thing with our hands clean, whether we get anything Absolutely, out of it absolutely. Uh, well, Senator Potter, I'd like to get back to the original uh, thesis uh, regarding this investigation of communists in the Army. Now, it seems to me we've been operating in a sort of a cloud land, and it's very hard to pin anything down on the, in the recent happenings between Stevens and Senator McCarthy. Do you think the Communist Party should now be outlawed so the Army can really uh, take some sort of action on There's it? There's no doubt about it, Larry. Uh, today, we're, we're operating in a sort of a in, in the area of contradiction. We say on one hand that the uh, uh, people will say, well, the Communist Party is a political party. It's, it's allowed on our ballots in certain states. Well, in, uh, in the, of the same token, we tried communists under the Smith Act. So I think that today there's no reason why any person should be so naive to join the Communist Party without knowing what he's belonging to. It's an international conspiracy dedicated to overthrow our form of government. We might just well recognize it and to outlaw the party. Well, thank you very much, Senator Potter. Glad thank to you. have you here tonight. Well, I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Larry. The opinions that you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lesser and Winston Burdett. Our distinguished guest, was the Honorable Charles E. Potter, United States Senator from Michigan. A Longines watch makes the most distinguished gift, for a Longines is not alone one of the very finest watches made anywhere in all the world, but equally important, it's the watch of highest prestige. Now consider these beautiful Longines ladies' watches. Here are superb examples of the watchmaker's exquisite art. Diamonds, where used, are of the finest quality. Meticulous hand finishing gives that final touch of perfection. For men, Longines has created a watch for every need and purpose. Shockproof, moisture-resistant, automatic watches for rugged service. Handsome dress watches for business and formal wear. Each style with impressive good taste. And every Longines watch, whether for a lady or for a gentleman, is made to the unique Longines standards of excellence which have won for Longines 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, highest honors for accuracy in fields of precise timing. And yet, you may buy and own or proudly give a Longines watch for as little as 7150. So, see your authorized Longines Whitnor Jeweler Agency and remember that throughout the world, no other name on a watch means so much as Longines, the world's most honored watch the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour. Broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches.